Hello from Shrix and hello from Smartherd. What's up guys? Welcome back guys to continue our discussion on the topic multiple screen densities in Android. This is a part 2 tutorial and the continuation of the previous tutorial. So let's continue our discussion on multiple screen support. Now in the last video we saw how to create images that that will make your application compatible with all the devices. Now the question arises where you are going to store all those images. We store images in the folders like drawable, drawable SDPI, drawable LDPI, MDPI and XSDPI. All these folders that you are aware of that we saw during our previous tutorials. All these folders meant to store the images. Now the first folder which is drawable it contains the default image. Which means while running your application, if your application didn't find perfect resolution image for the current device, then what it do? It draws the image from the drawable folder. In simple words, if you are using an HDPI devices, then it will look for the high definition dimension of the image. And if such image is not present in the HDPI folder, then what it does? It directly draws the image from the default folder, which is drawable. Now, similarly, we store LDPI images in the drawable LDPI folder, MDPI and HDPI and, and XHDPI images in the respective folders. Now this will make our application to run very smooth. So it is always recommended to store all your images in the respective folders for a perfect application. This will enhance the experience of a user, right? Now how to make layout for the multiple devices. Now your ID, your Eclipse ID says there are two types of devices, generic devices and Google devices. Now generic devices are having the version 2.2 onwards and it comprises of all the devices starting from version 2.2 Froyo ending at the latest one and it starts from the API level 8 onwards. But the right hand side devices which you can see here are mainly most of them are having the API level 13 onwards and version 3.2 onwards. So we will see how to create layouts and where to store layouts so that your application will be compatible with generic phones also and Google phones also. Now for the generic phones for the portrait mode we have to store our layouts in the respective folder. By default your Eclipse IDE creates a default layout folder in which you store your mylayout.xml right. Now apart from layout folder you have to manually create layout small, layout normal, layout large and layout x large folders in your Android application project and you have to design layout for each of these devices which is small devices, normal devices, large devices and x large devices and all these kind of devices we saw in the previous tutorial. This small, normal, large and extra large actually shows how much long is your screen is diagonally all about 2 to 3.7 inch, 3 to 4.3, 7 to 10 point inch, right and so on. Now simultaneously you have to create the layouts for the landscape mode also. In that case you have to simply add a suffix dash land dash land with each of the portrait modes folder, right. So total of 10 folders are required so as to make your application run flexibly on all the devices with perfect dimensions. Now the left hand side generic phones are only recommended that you use all these 10 folders only if you want your application to run in the version 2.2 onwards. Now if you set up your minimum required SDK version in your application as 3.2 which means you don't want your application to run in the 2.2 to Android 3.0. So in that case, we design the portrait and landscape mode layout and store those layout in these five folders layout layout dash SW320 layout dash SW480 DP and so on. Now this SW stand for smallest width that the user's device bears at a time. Now you must be thinking what the heck why I have written these two columns. Now at the right hand side if you are designing the portrait and landscape mode by using these folders then it is always recommended that you use these folders mainly for the tablets and in this case in these five folders the layouts are designed and stored by using fragments for both dual pane and single pane. We will talk about the right hand side column in detail when we will talk about fragments. We will design our layouts using fragments and we are going to store all our layouts in these 5 folders only. At that time we don't require to build all these 10 folders. Only our 5 folders will do our job. Now 
if you are using these five folders then these 10 folders which you can see layout normal layout large whatever blah 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 these are actually deprecated for the solo use in 3.2 honeycomb and above versions so at present as a beginner we will just try to design our layout and store those layout in these 10 folders and later on during our fragment tutorials we will design our layouts using fragments and i will show you how a single layout can act for both portrait and landscape mode all these data that you can see here for generic and google phones for use of these layouts as a fragments in tablets all these data I have collected from the developers.android.com and the link of those websites I am going to leave as a comment below my video. So if you want any further details, please click on those links and go to the official website of developers.android.com and check out. So in the next video, I am going to design our layout using these 10 folders. We will continue our making application on Android interview. So please stay tuned guys, catch you guys in next tutorial and meanwhile if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel and do share and leave a comment below my video. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you and have a good day.